Welcome back to our series on the unification principle, the path to happiness. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. We learned in the last session that Jesus came to make us perfect and bring God's kingdom. But he was rejected. And we still have so much sin and we live in a world of suffering. We surely do not want to reject Jesus when he comes back, so we can benefit by learning what the Bible reveals about the turning point between Jesus being accepted and being rejected in this session. We're going to examine Jesus' relationship with John the Baptist. He was a great religious leader in Israel, John, at the same time as Jesus. He was also Jesus' older cousin. To understand John, we have to know something about the Jewish religious expectations. Now, the Old Testament ends with the book of Malachi, written about 431 before BCE, before the Common Era. Malachi, in this book, foretold that the prophet Elijah would come again. He wrote, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. That's Malachi 4.5. So <clears throat> the Jewish people believed that Elijah would come before the Messiah. Who was Elijah? If we go back further, during the period of the divided kingdoms of north and south, Elijah defeated the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel with the power of God. This is recorded in 1 Kings chapter 18. And then Elijah fled from a wicked queen and ended up ascending into heaven in a whirlwind before he could complete his divine mission, which he passed down to Elisha. But now Malachi said that Elijah would return to open the way for the Messiah. The Jewish people believed in this prophecy, like as they believed in all of the scriptures, and they fervently hoped for the advent of the Messiah. Yet we should know that they longed just as eagerly for the return of Elijah. Nevertheless, before any sign of Elijah's coming, Jesus suddenly appeared and claimed to be the Messiah. So it's no wonder that his appearance and proclamation stirred up all of Jerusalem in great confusion. Jesus' disciples were asked questions about Elijah. Let's look at Matthew 17. The disciples went to Jesus and they asked, Then why do the scribes say that first Elijah must come? And Jesus replied that John the Baptist was the very Elijah for whom the people were awaiting. This is recorded in Matthew 11 and Matthew 17. Now, contradicting what Jesus said, John the Baptist himself flatly denied that he was Elijah. Read the Gospel of John 121. The Jewish scribes believed in John the Baptist, not Jesus. Jesus was uneducated, and he suddenly appeared and he made big claims with no apparent foundation. He called himself the Lord of the Sabbath, even though he broke the Sabbath laws. Jesus' disciples were simple fishermen, tax collectors, even prostitutes, sinners, with whom he would eat and drink when the Jewish people were fasting. But he claimed that he was equal with God and that no one could enter heaven except through him. Thus, to the Jewish people who lived according to the Old Testament law, Jesus' words and deeds appeared to attack God. Hence, it is not surprising that the Jewish leadership rebuked and mocked him and accused him even of being possessed by the devil. On the other hand, John the Baptist, he was born to a prominent family. He was the son of Zechariah, a high priest. The miracles and signs surrounding John's conception and birth were well known and they surprised all the hill country of Judea. Furthermore, John led an exemplary life of faith and discipline in the wilderness, surviving on locusts and wild honey. He was well educated. He was famous for his powerful ministry of repentance and he had thousands of followers. Some people even thought he might be the Messiah. So considering these circumstances, when the, when the people of Jesus' day compared Jesus and John the Baptist, without a doubt, John's words had more credibility. 
Since the people believed John, they considered Jesus' words to be a fabrication concocted to support his dubious claim to be the Messiah. Consequently, Jesus was condemned as an imposter. Since pious Jews would not even consider denying the scriptural words that Elijah must come before the Messiah, they were left with no other choice but to disbelieve in Jesus. Let's do a little more assessment of John the Baptist. The angel Gabriel actually spoke to Zechariah about John. Zechariah was John's father. The angel told John's father, and he, John, will go as a forerunner before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared for him. It's in the Bible, Luke 1.17. Now, before all of this came to a head, John shouted out, I am the voice of one shouting in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. So according to these biblical verses, John the Baptist indeed came as the Elijah, and he knew it, and his father knew it, to prepare the way for the Messiah. Now, if John the Baptist had carried out this mission to become one with Jesus, throwing all his support behind Jesus, would Jesus have died on the cross? No. Jesus could have established God's will without suffering on the cross. He would have been the wonderful counselor, the mighty Lord, the Prince of Peace, upon whose throne justice and mercy would have poured down like water. All the prophecies of the Lord of glory would have been fulfilled. If John the Baptist had testified to Jesus and listened to Jesus and become his first disciple and brought all of his followers to Jesus and worked with the Jerusalem temple and the leadership of Israel, God's providence would have been realized at that time. God did reveal who Jesus was to John. But John neglected it, and he turned away from Jesus. He began a ministry of preaching against the king. John the Baptist strongly criticized Harold Antipas' illegal marriage. As a result, he was confined in prison and eventually executed. While in prison, John tried to resolve his doubts by sending his disciples to Jesus, and they asked him, on behalf of John, are you he who is to come, or shall we look for another? Matthew eleven three. Jesus was very offended, but he answered him indirectly that he was indeed the Messiah. He said, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk and lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is he who takes no offense in me. Jesus went on to testify that John was Elijah and concluded, Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has risen no one greater than John the Baptist, Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. John the Baptist was the prepared central figure who was supposed to make the way straight for Jesus. He was a most blessed religious leader. But John could not unite with Jesus. And because he could not believe and attend Jesus as his Messiah, Jesus had to walk the lonely path, completely exposed to the opposition of the institutional religion and eventually die on the cross. Accordingly, John the Baptist's disbelief, his failure to lead his disciples by offering everything and attending Jesus became the greatest cause of Jesus' death on the cross. We have learned that John the Baptist's ignorance and disbelief in Jesus 
brought about so much suffering for Jesus and for all of humanity ever since. Our lesson is that we can't blame John. We can't blame the people of his times. It is not easy to recognize the Messiah. Instead, we have to study about the reality of Jesus. What made him the Messiah? And how can I become like him? And how can I recognize his return? In a subsequent presentation, we will discuss the meaning of salvation through the cross much more deeply. But first, let us talk about what happened right after the cross, and that is the resurrection. I think you'll find it interesting because we make it very realistic. Thanks for listening, and God bless you.